give the game away on it already. It's already given the score. Welcome to the Stacey West Fantasy Football Challenge, the show that we enjoy making a lot more than you seemingly enjoy watching. Um, we nearly got to triple figures last week, uh, but viewing fell by 50% and wonder if it might fall again. But I don't care because we actually had a phenomenal weekend on the fantasy football, didn't we? It created an awful lot of division and divide. And when I say didn't we, I am, of course, talking to the person who is currently handing my ass to me on a plate, Christopher fucking Lamming. Hello. I won again, but only yeah. just. Yeah. Only just. It was interesting, though. There's a, there a lot of uh, little storylines going on in the AFL last weekend, despite a very much reduced fixture list due to international call-ups, which I quite liked. I think it was it was interesting to try and pick those extra, uh, find the little the little nuggets there, the little the little wins with a, you know, because obviously with, with fewer games, if there are fewer players to pick from, so it's more likely that you're going to have the same player as somebody else. So to find the differentials there, I think was always quite interesting. I think I got a little lucky with one of my picks. Um, so the one you were going to take out. Yeah, that's the reason I thought it was lucky because it, yeah, one of my picks got quite <laughs> and it's the one I wasn't quite so sure about. Um, when I finished my team last week, so yeah, three nil up currently against you, but I think it hasn't been. Uh, sometimes goal line doesn't tell the reflect the game, does it? And I think no, goal line as it currently stands doesn't necessarily reflect the the, the closeness that there's been. I time think if we were doing fantasy xp expected points uh i think it would be 2-1 now because i actually feel aside from two uh, two uh, well at least one stroke of incredible bad luck once again um i would have claimed the victory but we'll come on to that i am a curse and if i am a curse supporters of colchester middlesbrough wrexham can't think who that is. Fleetwood, Doncaster, Birmingham and West Brom need to look away. I've tried to spread the love this week across all of the players, but we will, of course, come on to that. Yes, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, Chris won 3-0 this week. So these were our teams. Um, the difference in points, I haven't actually marked it down on there, but I think it was, it, I, it was minimal, wasn't it? How many points did you score this week? I ended up with 59 points last week. And I ended up with 46, which left me somewhere around 30th in the um, Stacey West table. So I actually had a really good week. And we'll look at the, how that affects the bottom of the Stacey West fantasy table in a bit, which is now, by the way, 88 people strong. 88 people. So there we go. So let's talk about the obvious issues. First of all, we both captained Jody Jones. And he and didn't play. You see, that's me sinking you because it's a curse that affects me, unfortunately, and me alone. Um, so I, I captained Jody Jones and he didn't play. Well, that was crap. <laughs> um, I also had Robbie McKenzie didn't play for Gillingham when he played every game um, up until that point. And then the obvious one, which was it's just I, how did I see, I've never see it coming? Minus two points for Paul Farman. And let's face it, if he doesn't get sent off, Barrow win 1-0 and he keeps a clean sheet. That's fact. And yeah, he gets sent off. And if he does that, I win the week because I get Barrow winning at the bottom where I was six points down on that. So that would have put me up to 52 and I wouldn't have had minus two for Paul Farman. So there's 54. And what did you get? 53? 59. But you'd have been close with a, with a clean no, sheet well. from a goalkeeper, wouldn't it? It would have been close though. It'd be really close. Well, Certainly. So highlights for me. We'll come on to yours in a minute. Cleworth, vice captain at Wrexham, 14 points. Chuffed with that. I took a bit of a punt on Aaron Wildig and he scored, I think, for Newport. I was chuffed with that. And let's face it, a six and a seven from Jack Marriott and Robbie Gotts isn't bad. If I get a six and seven from all of all of the players in my team, that's going to be 42 to 49 points, isn't it? And then I'm looking at picking up the ones at the bottom. So, but go on. How did you win? Um, fortunately, I think with picked two teams that did win. I think I think I sometimes underestimate the importance of the two teams at the bottom. And I think that will start to become quite interesting later in the season because you're obviously more likely to pick uh, teams that have got a winning record. But you can only pick each team five times as a maximum over the whole season. I've already picked Notts County twice, I think. So 
I think as the season progresses, that can become really interesting. So that's 18 points for me, fortunately, because I picked two teams that won. That's that's quite a lot of points, obviously. Um, you mentioned Jody Jones, obviously, was a, a negative for both of us, didn't play. I also picked Dan Crowley, who didn't play either for Notts County. So there's two players with zero there. Um, but I was quite fortunate in that I had 18 points combined from Okawankro and um, O'Connell from Wrexham, plus the Wrexham win. So I really backed Wrexham last week. And the big win was, was Mickey Dimitri with 60 points, 16 points, sorry. Uh, he, I believe, got an assist, plus had about a million clearances, did well for crew. So, yeah, that was the big win for me. So it makes it 3-0. But we've decided on a an interesting rule change. And I have to say, I brought this to you, didn't I? Rather than uh, you did bring this around. to me. But I have to thank um, a certain Dean Gripton. Uh, Dean works at, at Sports Interactive, who can make the, the Football Manager video game. And uh, I, I was chatting to him. Last weekend about this, uh, he's he's really into this, and he's for the whole season making a team which is only allowed to contain players who are selected by fewer than one percent of EFL players. Um, so on when you're picking your team, there's, you can you can have a little drop down that shows what percentage of all the players that are playing about the EFL, as in or not the punters, what percentage of those people have picked that player, and he's only allowed to pick players that less than 1% of people Fewer. picked. Of course, I hate that as well. I'm sorry, it's annoyed me now that I made that mistake. Um, so we're bringing that rule in. So what we've said is at any point this season, if either of us get to a point where we're three points ahead, then um, that person must then pick a team that only that follows the 1% rule, basically. So less than 1% for every single player that you select. Um, and I assume that's going to continue. But yeah. <laughs> is it it's fewer? Just in case. No, is it fewer? With because it's a number, it's directly a number, isn't it? So yeah, of course. Fewer than one percent. I'm not sure if it is. I'm not sure. Pete it's would one, know, but he, he it's doesn't. One, isn't it? Like one's a bit different to every other number. It's you singular. can't have fewer than one, can you? Yeah. But fewer than one percent, you can have 0.5 percent. Don't know. It's not a maths Whatever. podcast. Don't care. All exactly. it means is you've got big players. I, I was actually just because we've just recorded our full podcast. Mm. I just nipped to the loo in between this, and I was thinking about it. It'd make it quite exciting. I think I would imagine you had more fun picking your team this week than I did. And if you go 4 0 up, you will have an awful lot more fun on this podcast next week than I will. Although I may not be on it next week because I'm away. But Dean Gripton um, is coming on. Uh, well, fingers, fingers, crossed, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. And if you're watching this and you are a fantasy football fan and you feel like coming on and discussing your teams and tactics, please do. We really enjoy doing this this video. Um, it, it's not going to ever get big views. We know that it's only ever going to get 60 or 70 people. That's that's fine because we're having loads of fun with the fantasy football. If you want to join in the fun, you can come on and, and have a go. Jack Mulhall might not want to after the week he had, which lead us on quite nicely to the league tables. Now, I've put the top and the bottom on the same one today. So let's go through the top. Um, first of all, we've got uh, G Priestley at the top, 326 points. Phenomenal. A Jones. Second, C. Anderson, third. And then you see, look, look there, my Ben House, M. Bottomley. I got more points than him this week. John Leonard, massive climber, 87 points. Imagine getting 87 points in a single week. Jay Jones, 72. Jay Siddons, 79. Will Mitson, 45. I got more than Will. Will Mitson, more than two teams in the top 10. Then M. Burgess and C. Brown. So they're your top 10. I wish you'd put first names. It feels really impersonal. In, in, in but M bottomly, and I'm so terrible with first names. I get my my cadm arteries mixed up all the time, so I'm not going to risk it. Now we get over to the bottom ten, and I want to point something out to you in the bottom ten because oh, yeah. yours truly was bottom bar Chris, who had a two week um, game in hand almost over me. I don't see me in the bottom ten anymore. Do you have a quick look? No, I can't spot you there at all, mate. Can, no, I can no, see no. another member or two of the Stacey West podcast. So, R. Scott, which I think might be Rob Scott, and C. Bully, which I think is Chris Bully, no points. I imagine that they haven't changed their teams this week. But that's fine. That's brilliant. It pulls me away. Carl Beach, it was his first week. So, we're going to let Carl off. He got 67. So, he beat me and you at the bottom. Strong start. But yeah, you've got to look there at Stu Wells, 14 points. Oh, dear, Stu. 
Oh dear, where's Mr. Beast and 18 He's points? He's just below. Well, can I just make a point that just gives me a little pat on the back? Because I, as you mentioned, didn't play the first two weeks, whereas Stu and Charlie, I believe, did. And I'm ahead of them both now. So that's quite satisfying, I must admit. I'm satisfied that I'm ahead of three of you, albeit with you being um, three nil up and two weeks in hand on me. Um, but I'm actually 77th and I'm focusing on this. By the end of the campaign, I think I can get into the top 30 because I think most other people will lose interest. <laughs> and I won't That's lose it. interest. I am absolutely going for this. So, look, there's a whole load of people in the middle. What we haven't pointed out is Ben is actually just outside the top 30, I think. So he's doing phenomenally well, but we're binning him off at the moment because the battle is all about at the bottom. Uh, so they are your league tables. Once again, if you feature on there, if you want to come on here and have a chat with us, all it is is just a five, ten minute chat about your team, about any stories around the fantasy league. So have you picked the Luton goalkeeper after he's been sent off? Have you picked a Lincoln player who's then got sent off? Have you picked a former Lincoln player who's then got sent off? If you have, you're on a par with me. Do you manage to pick a player that doesn't get picked every single week? Somebody doesn't get picked. <laughs> <sighs> What are we going to do this week then, Chris? Should we take people through our teams? Let's do it. Uh, which one's that? That is that. So these are the teams at the moment. Now, as we record, our, one of our players, or we've both got a player playing. So we've both picked a Doncaster player in our midfield. We have, yes. I picked Jordan Gibson. So just a reminder, I'm only allowed to pick players that are selected by less than 1% of the overall player base. I think the obvious Doncaster player to select in midfield would be Lee Molyneux, has got a lot of points, but because of that, he's selected by a lot of players. Now, Jordan Gibson plays on the other wing. Doncaster currently playing away at Paragat. I feel there's a bit of a mismatch there. Um, so personally, I felt that Jordan Gibson would be uh, a strong contender for that fixture. But um, as we record right now, I think it's currently 1-0 to Paragat. So that's going well. 2-0, brilliant. 2-0, 2-0, Tarragon, yeah. I know, crazy, isn't it? So I went for Luke Molyneux after he was in your team last week. You've captained Jordan Gibson. Yeah, that's, that's quite bold, isn't it? I, I just thought it, there was a mismatch between Doncaster and Harrogate so far this season. I thought, you know, he's a he's a player that's really good on 1v1 dribbling, and I thought uh, Harrogate maybe aren't the best at, at defending against that. But, yeah, that's come back to bite me, hasn't it, already? So from the top then, um, obviously I've gone for Will Mannion in goal, Charlton Athletic, uh, playing Shrewsbury Town. I, I don't think I need to say any more, to be honest. But then last week I picked um, uh, Paul Farman because they were playing Swindon who didn't score and that blew up in my face. I don't have a good record with goalkeepers, do I? Because I had Kaminsky who didn't play because he had been sent off as well. So I think the only one I've had that's done any good is Alex Palmer. So... Will Mannion for me in goal. I, I just think um, I think Charlton are a, a decent side. I think Shrewsbury are a woeful side, and I know that we backed again. I backed against Shrewsbury a couple of weeks ago, and then they ended up going off and winning um, heavily. They're not going to win heavily this weekend, so that's why I picked Mister Mannion. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, just want to put out everyone can obviously see the, the, the teams. I've heavily backed Charlton this week um, as well. I've gone for Gas and I had me up top, who has actually not scored that many points yet. But I think he's uh, he's a really threatening player. Um, has had a few chances, hasn't quite taken them yet, but he's going to get plenty of chances against Shrewsbury uh, and Kane Ramsey. Uh, I've gone for for Charlton as well because I think they're going to beat Shrewsbury. He's a fullback who will likely keep a clean sheet or has a good chance of doing so, but also can 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 offer quite a lot going forward as well. So I uh, just want to touch on that. It linked into your your Charlton discussion. But if you do have the touch of death and something terrible happens to Will Mannion, and that gives Shrewsbury a chance of getting in. To the game then i could be pretty yeah pretty pretty damaged here with two charlton players and selecting charlton as one of my teams at the bottom uh, but i've gone for uh, joel pereira in goal uh, of reading i'm backing reading this week as well with two players from reading joel pereira has been selected by 0.8 players um they're playing at home to leighton orient who uh are obviously having a very very slow start to the season as much as reading haven't had the opportunity to add a huge number of reinforcements or any reinforcements this summer. Um, they've got a reasonably strong squad and I think they're just, uh, they're, they're good at home. Um, I think they've got a good chance of, uh, of keeping a clean sheet against a 
Uh, pretty toothless Leighton Orient at the moment. So I, I'm hoping Joel Pereira gives me a, a decent chance of a clean sheet. Very good. Um, so quickly, I've gone. I've also gone with uh, Ben Goodliff, who is Colchester. They're playing Morecambe. Morecambe are pretty much terrible, um, which probably I should have gone for a defender who might have conceded goals, but actually was was going to be um, was going to be kept quite busy. But I fancy him for a clean sheet. I mean, as you've already picked up on one of your centre backs, I've also gone for Matt Clark. That's because I did a video for an On The Terraces YouTube the other day where I looked at the current championship team of the season and Matt Clark was the one of the centre-halves. Preston, I just fancy Middlesbrough against Preston to win the game. Um, I quite like Matt Clark. I think he's a commanding centre-half. He's already got two goals this season. Unlikely that he's going to go and get three and four, but I just think they're two dependable players that could deliver me a, a kind of a, a six. And that's what I'm working. I'm looking at these players and I'm thinking if I can get, on average, kind of, four to six from four or five of the players and then two big, big hitters, which obviously we'll come to in a minute. So that's my centre-halves. I'm really interested, actually, in one of your centre-halves as well, because um, obviously he's not one of your defenders in Trey Hume because he nearly signed for us, didn't he? He did indeed, yeah. There's always that little bit of uh, one that got away, isn't there, about Trey Hume? The reports that he was at the training ground, almost signed and sealed, and then um, Sunderland could swoop in. But he's been uh, a fixture of Sunderland's team so far this season. And they're playing away at away at Plymouth. I think the fact it's away maybe makes it slightly less of a popular choice. Um, I, I don't want to kind of. I'm not the sort of person that that doubles down on a on an opinion and then defends it. I don't think. I think I'm, I'm quite open to changing my mind when when evidence comes up and suggests that I was wrong. But I've seen nothing so far from Plymouth Argyle to suggest that I'm wrong about them being crap under Wayne Rooney, uh, particularly against a side that's really really strong in Sunderland. So again looking for mismatches in, in fixtures uh, and then finding a player that I think got a good chance of, of scoring some points that, that wasn't selected, of course, by many people. So, yeah, Trey Hume for me, who's currently got 24 points so far this season, which I think is a reasonable return. Good haul. Do you know, in game week two, I picked Donovan Daniels, who was injured, G. Rutter, who was injured, and Sammy Smodic, who had Blackburn had sold to Ipswich the night before. And I still scored 33 points because I got Burnley on nine, Louis Barry on seven. Hutton on seven. Anyway, I was just looking through the uh, the teams to see how bad how I'd done so badly. Um, God, that was a bad week. Look, twenty five points I scored the week that I uh, I had Kaminsky picked because I only got two from a load of others. I've been let down so much. I'm hoping that Fleetwood won't let me down. I think Fleetwood are a side that are destined to come back up. They're playing against Carlisle, who currently are um, managerless, rudderless struggling uh, and Mr. Sarpang Wayadu uh, is their leading midfielder at the minute. I scored most points for him. So literally I'm just going with the numbers. I'm just playing percentages. Uh, I am absolutely determined to claw my way up in the most boring way possible. And that's by not trying anything spectacular, going with the proven. All I went did this week was I clicked on a position. I clicked over on average game points and I looked at the team players in the top five or six average points for their division, looked who their team was playing and picked the ones that I think are going to win. So I picked the players that have done well over the course of the season and are in games that I think are going to win. Hence, Sarpong Wairu. Yeah, I think that's really interesting tactic, actually, particularly so early in the season, because there are some players that have got like high, high points so far, but they've had like one amazing game where they scored 20 plus points, but they haven't really been consistent necessarily. So maybe selecting players that have got a high average points per game ratio is maybe the way forward. Side note, absolutely baffled as to why Riredu did not get a move back into League One this summer. I, I thought he's a superb player, has no right at all playing in League Two. His just level of his level of ability is so much higher than that. So yeah, I think there'll be a bit of a mismatch there. So that's a strong shout. My other midfielder is Lewis Wing of Reading. As mentioned before, Reading are playing against Leighton Orient at home. Um, Lewis Wing is a, a a strong midfielder at this level, has has some really good attributes. Um, and again, I, I was torn between a couple actually, and 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 it was him and uh, Savage. I was I was kind of a little bit torn, but I decided to go for Wing just because. Again, I I feel like the interceptions tally for uh, for Reading, well not for Reading, sorry for midfielders, is something that I've, I've yet to exploit properly yet. And, and Lewis Wing has got the chance of of, of shooting from range. He's he's good at that. He's, he's he's relatively creative, but he also plays in that slightly deeper role. Hopefully, hopefully, we'll get some interceptions against a team that do like to play out a little bit. So, 
Lewis Wing in midfield for me. Now, over the last three weeks, I scored 25, up to 36, up to 46. And I'm absolutely convinced that this week I could score 46 across my front two. Josh Madger's the player that outside, I think, of uh, Cleworth has scored me the most individual points any week. And that was through an assist when I captained him in game week four. In game week four, it was a toss-up between Billy Bowden and Alfie May as vice-captain. I went with Billy Bowden. He got injured after 20 minutes and scored me one point. I am not taking that risk again. I've gone Josh Madger, Alfie May. I think Josh Madger got a hat-trick on the opening day, but West Brom are, are always dangerous. Um, he's playing a Portsmouth side that you know, I think eventually Portsmouth will settle into a little bit of a rhythm in the lower half of the table. And I can see West Brom being a team in the promotion race. I expect him to score. And Alfie May, you just expect to score uh, at any time. I have resisted picking Alfie May for five full weeks purely because I don't really like him. Um, this week, I will like him immensely if he scores against Wrexham. Risky. I it is risky. Picking a striker in that it game. It is risky, yeah, picking a striker in that game. But also, you know what's incredibly interesting is that that game was on Monday night, I think. I know. So that know. The, it is Monday night. It could, it could be a big old. Big old game in regard to score by that point. You never I'll know what will happen. I'll be oh, away. We'll be in Whitby, go. so there won't be an awful lot. But I, it's likely that we'll be at the Airbnb, so it's likely that there will still be a little bit of what they traditionally call as banter. Now, I really like your final centre-forward pick, although he's playing on the right wing at the moment for Derby. Uh, Thank because you. Because he actually features... In the Y Scout index for the best 11 players in the championship this season, yes, he does. Did, did you know that? Yeah, I had a little look earlier. <laughs> that actually wasn't the reason I, I double I looked at that beforehand. Um, when I was researching the Peterborough game for us, just like looking at indexes, I like, I like looking at the Y Scout, to be honest. I love and, the I, index, and I noticed yeah. that. And I also noticed that he is selected by less than one percent of people, had a good game, um, last week. I think, uh, I think he scored last week to so have been. A strong performer, but hadn't really picked up many points, hadn't been involved in many like direct goal goal contributions, despite underlying numbers being threatening. And they're playing so to Derby are at home to Cardiff. Now Derby will never be the sort of team that's that creates loads and loads and loads of chances under, under Paul Warren, but um they're playing against uh, at least on paper the poorest side currently in the championship in Cardiff City. And Caden Jackson is a is a performer for them. And is the sort of player that gets himself involved, doesn't he? In the simplest of terms, he will be involved in duels. He will be involved in in um, deliveries. He gets on the end of things or tries to. Um, he's a threatening player with his pace and his physicality. And I just think he's a sort of player that you don't necessarily have to rely on him being technically better than the opposition to create things. So I've selected uh, Dan Crowley, for example, from Notts County a couple of times so far. And... In the right game, he just dominates because his technical ability is so much higher than League Two. But in other games, he, he doesn't always um, doesn't always shine. Whereas Caden Jackson always has that threat about him. So yeah, I was quite pleased with this one. Uh, I maybe think I should have maybe a vice captain or captained him rather than a had may. But you know, it's, the damage is done now. But we'll see. We're interested to see how that goes. Again, it's it, you're right though from what you said earlier. It was more fun this week setting those restrictions, trying to find those players and rather than just relying on the ones that kind of everyone's going for. But it can go one or two ways. You can either score a lot of points finding someone that no one else has and catch up on your opponents or you're going to get battered. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Now the teams at the bottom have obviously both gone for Sunderland versus Plymouth um, for obvious reasons interesting you've obviously gone charlton shrewsbury so you're kind of betting more against shrewsbury than you are for charlton i would imagine there well um, kind of but 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 also i've selected i've selected two charlton players and one of them been a striker that hasn't scored yet so i i just think charlton are much better than the shrewsbury so it's, it's it's a bit of both it's very much against shrewsbury but i think that the differential in quality between the two teams is enormous See, what I find interesting is you have literally lumped on two games. So Sunderland and Charlton, uh, of your six, seven, eight, nine picks, Sunderland and Charlton are uh, account for five of your nine picks. So if either of those games don't go your way, 
it bites you. I that's what did me last week. I decided last week I had Barrow as one of my teams and one of my players. And obviously that falls down. As soon as that falls down, it really affects you. And had Barrow hung on for the win and Paul Barrow, it would. So I've gone for Stockport, who I haven't picked any Stockport, where I haven't picked any players from. I've gone for Sunderland, I haven't picked any players from. So I've literally spread across nine teams. I don't think I've got anybody repeated from team or player. Uh, and I think that that is... I think that's an interesting strategy for me. It's it's something I'm going to try. It is interesting because, it, again, it can go back one or two ways because, well, last week I got nine points because it's not County won, but obviously I selected Dan Crowley and uh, Jody Jones. They got me zero points. So if, like you mentioned, one game doesn't go to your go your way, then it massively, massively hinders you. But if it does go your way, then you get a, a huge number of points because you kind of get that multiplier of the team plus the players as well. Whereas by spreading yourself, then you're getting more you're a higher probability of getting decent points, but maybe a lower probability of scoring really highly. Not, we're all new at this. It'd be interesting to see kind of which which methodology kind of becomes successful as the season progresses. I'm you know nervous this week. Though. I've just looked through the top ten teams in the Stacey West League this week, and you know nine of them have picked Luke Molyneux. Nine have picked Luke Molyneux. That's that's unbelievable, really, isn't it? I find that fascinating. I find it. I just he find it quite fascinating. So many more points than anyone else in League Two this season. I think in that position, hasn't he? And also, I may have may have done wrong uh, because I'm looking through um, the other teams and the teams that won last week. For instance, 87 points destroy Grimsby. Uh, Aside from captain in Mickey Dimitri, which was a, an amazing shout, Luke Molyneux and Billy Sharp both in there, Oconquo O'Connor and Wrexham in there. So again, somebody there has lumped on five different five from two games uh, and been successful. So maybe, maybe it is a uh, a fallacy from me. That's G Priestley, John Leonard. What did he do? He had Paul Farman in goal. John Leonard scored 87 points and his goalkeeper got minus two. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. Good work. He captained David, David McGoldrick, 20. And he, he, Matty Godden only got You know what? That's well. smart. That's really smart. He got That's David insane. McGoldrick okay. captained. Okay. Elliot Lee got a 12. Mickey Dimitri got a 12. Notts County a nine. Cree, crew a seven. Clee with a seven. Phillips vice captain on a nine. And he had Farman on minus two. Godden on one and still pulled 87 points. Look, we're coming to the end of the show now. Uh, yeah, I should have closed the picture a long while ago. <laughs> I just got carried away uh, in talking about it. And now I can't take it off. There we go. Chris sent me a private chat saying close it now. So there we go. Right. So that's the fantasy football this week. Who's going to win, me or Chris? You can put in the comments below uh, if you want. If you don't want, don't don't bother. Um, if you do want to come on the show, do comment or drop us a message and we will have somebody on and we won't talk so much about our teams. We'll talk a little bit about your team, in the meantime, Chris is 3-0 up. So we're now entering the handicap phase. It's utterly shameful for me, but I am fighting back up that table. So uh, we shall keep our fingers crossed for this week. All that remains to be said is, as always, up the imps. Up the imps. <laughs>